Right. <clears throat> hello, 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 and welcome back. This is Franz Cantor, cartoonist, illustrator, tune talker. I'm here um, doing another what, what I do during the lockdown. I draw. So today I'm going to draw someone very special. This is the subject of today. And uh, if you don't recognize it, it's not um, Santa Claus. It's actually um, Ron Cobb. So I've done a little thumbnail there. So Ron Cobb was born in 1937. Uh, he died uh, this week, actually, September 21st. And he's an American-Australian cartoonist, artist, film designer, worked on numerous films, starting with Dark Star, which uh, I saw when I was when I was very young and I loved it, and on to Star Wars in 1977, Alien, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Conan the Barbarian, Back to the Future, The Abyss, Total Recall, another fantastic film. And I worked uh, with him, closely with him, on a film called Garbo in 1992. And uh, I just did the movie poster for that. And I actually got uh, Ron to autograph the book of alien for me because I, I actually lent somebody stupidly my color vision book so there it is to france from space to garbage regards ron cobb so his designs apart from hr geiger of course and mobius what did he do he did some really important things man he did some of the spaceship designs for the nostromo and uh, he sort of changed the face of science fiction films from that moment on did a lot of work on uh, Star Wars, you know, the creating the world and um, uh, all of the other films that, uh, that he worked on, including um, Conan the Barbarian. So let's have a little quick little look. This is some of uh, his Star Wars designs. They're, you know, you can really, uh, you could argue the fact that uh, where would, um, where would we be without Ron Cobb? And of course, uh, we, we'd probably be stuck still in the 1960s. So he was really responsible for quite a lot of, uh, you know, and this one, of course, is, is, is a, a major uh, concept art piece. It sort of just sets the, the whole, it's just legitimate, just looks like, you know, a legitimate planet. This is from the uh, iconic bar scene. Different life forms. This is his. Uh, this is 1966. His early cartoon days. Um, very very strong uh, sense of uh, composition and social um, uh, comment. This is the cover, of course, of uh, Color Vision. It's his uh, iconic book. If you have that. Fantastic, good on you. You should, if you don't, you should, you, you need it because this will change your life. This is um, some sketches from Conan the Barbarian. This is him. I'm actually going to work from this uh, photo because I, I quite like this. There's a sense of honesty in there, which is uh, really, you know, how I remember uh, Ron Cobb. Last time I saw him was uh, at the, uh, the, the Masters Forum, the Creative Masters Forum in 2008, which was an afters event. And this is the certificate I get for, for going there. There's 60 of, six, number six of 30. Um, that's a, like a, a hand-signed uh, limited edition print. The first bunch of people that uh, signed up for the forum. And that was a, a great uh, experience. So, you know, this is, he's, he has an iconic look as well. He's very, he looks the part. He looks like a, a bit of a, a barbarian, but he's really a nice guy, very gentle giant. That's from the Creative Masters Forum in 2008. And uh, there's some designs, early designs of the DeLorean. So he's kind of a master of all... Um, Many, many different mediums. That's the poster I did with him for Garbo. Oh, I can't remember the year now. Um, 
but that was uh, 1992. There you go. So 1992, and then in 2008, that was the last time uh, that I saw our friend. And uh, you know, he. Um, there's been a few people in my life that have uh, meant a lot to me, and uh, he certainly won. So let's uh, let's get in to see what we can do, what mischief we can get up to with uh, with our drawing. Right, uh, so this is a thumbnail. I'm trying to work out because he's, he's it, it, you know, it's hard to sort of create uh, a, a caricature of somebody who is, you know, very, very even tempered and, you know, all of the lines on his face sort of indicate um, uh, deep understanding and compassion and all this sort of thing. So that everything is sort of like an even proportion. Um, but I kind of think that the um, the main elements would be his sort of you know tousled hair, his rough hair, which kind of looked like a like a schoolboy, never been combed, never seen a comb, and uh, and his and his beard, and you know those two things I think are a kind of iconic for him. The other thing is uh, he has these deep blue eyes that are uh, very, very uh, intense. So he's obviously a great observer of, uh, of, of details and, and has an incredible imagination. So really deep understanding of things and how they work and a curiosity. You know, I mean, uh, half of the, um, the forum uh, in 2008 was him uh, relating stories of the different areas of film that he was involved in. You know, he's directed, and, um, art directed and, and designed and, and sort of, you know, delved into, really deep dived into the uh, process of uh, filmmaking and a lot of the early technical uh, things as well, including VR. So he had a curiosity, which, uh, you know, is a sort of a hallmark of... Uh, of a great uh, thinker like this. So I've done a little thumbnail sketch um, and it's, you know, it, his head, let's, let's face it, we're going to be looking at a circle for most, most of this, right? Probably we're going to try to pull elements out so that it doesn't look so um, symmetrical. Um, but, uh, you know, generally, you know, when you're looking at drawing uh, somebody's head, which is very reminiscent of a single shape, um, try you. You have to try to sort of work with that as a as a main structure, and then sort of create a sense of uh, believability with the elements that you're drawing inside. So let's let's uh, um, let's deep dive into into the structure of the details. So what I've done is I've kind of settled on a rough idea of how I want to draw his face and. Um, and some of the element, elements I thought I'd put in, try to, in my, my crude way, try to get a, a sketch, a sketchy idea of Luke's um, hideaway, his home on Tatooine. You know, that sort of uh, iconic igloo structure and the two sons. So I might use that as a sort of a background uh, element. So anyway, I've taken the opportunity to draw up a, a roughly uh, the thumbnail. Uh, idea I have to the toned paper with some brown with a brown pencil and that's how we're going to attack this we're going to be drawing it with a brown pencil a black pencil and a white pencil so let's try to get in and uh, and delve into the details of uh, one corpse face so um, you know all those films that I mentioned obviously are on everybody's video shelf um, they're films that we've known and loved I particularly love uh, Conan and uh, um, uh, Total Recall. I think uh, there's just something about you know the, there's just something about um, Arnold Schwarzenegger and those genre films uh, that just sort of mesh really well. Okay, so I'm just trying to get some detail. I've taken most of the photographs of Ron are, aren't very clear, but you know this this one is there's a little bit more detail in this one, which I can sort of I'm imagining I can glean a little bit of uh, expression, which is r really important because 
you know, when you're drawing a face, irrespective of whether it's a portrait or a caricature, caricatures just really give you more opportunity to delve into, you know, the expressions and think about why those expressions are there and, uh, it's, and, and wrinkles and things like that and sort of understand, you know, the passage of time and thoughts and feelings and emotions and things like that that have played uh, a part in the erosion of the, of the landforms which is another nice way of saying um, his face has a lot of shape, has a lot of wrinkles. He's, he's got a, there's a geezer um, here. We're drawing a geezer. So that's, you know, what more can I say? He's a lovely man. He's a lovely geezer. Okay, let's, you know what, we're going to swap around, we're going to move around quite a bit with the, the, the different colour pencils and I think that's because we're trying to establish some clear um, contrasts here and finding our personality, we're discovering his personality, we're just actually finding him in the paper. Because I don't really have, there's not a lot going on in my head, so I'm just sort of finding my way um, live, organically. So, you know, again, anything can happen in the next half hour or so. We don't know. We could get the likeness, we could lose the likeness, you know, we could. Uh, go down a, a different track and um, come up with something entirely unexpected. So I'm, my, I'm just zipping back and forth to the reference material to find what's important in you know his uh, expression that I can try to um, capture and um, map out because you know drawing is is kind of like cartography in a way. You map drawing these forms, these features that are very reminiscent in many ways to landforms and and um, shapes that we find in in the world. So streets and rivers and creeks and mountains and you know gullies, etc. So looking at the relevance of uh, all of these forms in some form of context so that they're linked up together in a beautiful um, context, in a beautiful way that sort of tells a story of, uh, of his face. That's what we're kind of uh, after. So in order to help us with that, it's good to understand uh, the processes. One of the things that we need to consider is the, the, the relationships between these things, which I've outlined here in blue. So this is the this sort of T-zone or mask area. We've got the eyes and the nose and the mouth. Those are the things that hold reference for us to, to establish a likeness. Uh, resemblance to the to the character so that's where we're going to be concentrating a lot of our efforts in that sort of t-zone lighting wise uh, there's a sort of a a light source was coming in on the left which means that all of the shadows are going to be on the right hand side of the form all right so there's not a lot of uh, other things to mention in this. There's not a lot of perspective happening in here because most of the face is, uh, you know, it's although it's slightly rotated to the left, it's uh, most of it is is uh, facing us. But that's fine. There's, you know, we have we work with what we have, and you have to. 
you know, you have to sort of weather that. We don't always get what we want. I would like more uh, choice in you know, some of the photographs of, the, of him to work from, but uh, we just don't have that, unfortunately. There's not a lot available. So in caricatures, you move forms around, but they still have a relationship one to another. So the eyes relate to the nose, and the nose and everything relates to the eyes and the mouth, etc. So there's a sort of a, a gestural relationship between the shapes. Um, gestures usually describe movement in space. It's a musical to a uh, dance term actually but uh, refers to the movement of um, a living thing in space it creates some sort of main directional lines or line lines of uh, power or lines of, of uh, mass displacement or um, you know there's a lot of things that it actually refers to and uh, it might sound a bit uh, sort of wrong to apply it to a portrait but you know the I've always believed that the 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 relative truth of um, drawing is that anything that you draw like this a portion of like a hand or a face or something it has to re refer to the entire body in some way um, it's just one of those things it sort of you know, there are elements, shapes and forms and things, micro wrinkles and stuff that that uh, tell you a complete story. And it may even be something um, almost a, a subliminal, you know, reaction to to um, the, sh the forms and shapes that you see. There's a lot of uh, beautiful... Um, should be careful with the amount. See, black uh, that's not toned with a brown pencil underneath looks very different on the grey paper, so we have to sort of keep that in mind as well. So we're kind of uh, structured by the material, um, the behaviour of the materials as well. Some beautiful uh, forms created by this, the muscles of the lower lid. So just to articulate a little bit better, there are rings around the eye, okay? There are rings around the mouth, but uh, there's rings around the eyes that are um, incredibly articulate in a human face. And they can create bulges and furrows and things like that. They are um, further uh, um, acted upon by these um, crisscross um, tendons and uh, other muscles. So this is how this is what I mean by how everything sort of interacts. So if you make a move of the lip, somewhere it ripples up into the eye. So you often hear the expression "smiling eyes." Well, smiling eyes are created by the muscles of the mouth smiling and interacting with the muscles of the eye. Okay. All right. So, let's push on with all possible dispatch. So there's a sense of the familiar when you're working with forms, even though you're pushing them in other directions, with it, like a caricature. Um, you're actually exploring how far you can push these forms before they break or before they become irrelevant to the to the subject you're drawing. Okay, so far so good. Let's try that. Maybe just a bit of a sharpen. That's it. 
There's a lot of very fine details which I'm trying my best to capture here. And a lot of forces at work here because he's got an incredibly energetic and articulate face, very expressive. Um, this is a man that works really well with people. He's a people person. And he has an incredible amount of honesty and energy. And um, that shows in, in these, um, this muscle activity and expressions over time which have created this intricate net of lines and, and shapes on his face. So I want to try to refer to some of that as much as I can. Okay, we're going to work on those. So there's a lot of reflections in his eyes. It's kind of a, a world-weary or sunburnt um, effect. The weathering of the forms. I want to try to capture some of that. If I can, early, that would be great. usually highlights on next to the shadows um, that creates like a, a nice tonal contrast so a lot of the, the details are obscured in this photograph because it is quite pixelated. Um, so uh, some of these elements I have to sort of make up. Uh, I have to assume that they're there. You know, I can't really, I can't really tell 100%, but uh, according to anatomy, certain things have to be So they have to be there, have to be visible somehow. So I'm doing these uh, highlights on the, the top parts of these little forms. So, you know, like the big forms of the furrows of the face, you know, you get down into the, into the details, they all have light and shade as well. So it's not just a linear concept of wrinkles, but the, the wrinkles are actually they have uh, volume, they have depth, and they affect the uh, volume of, uh, of the forms. So, you know, it's important to treat that appropriately. Some great uh, leathery that sort of effects that I'm trying to catch. And you can see how it's punching out from the grey paper quite well. That's a really good... Um, a good uh, thing is helping that, helping the uh, three-dimensional qualities of the drawing quite well. His eyes are very blue, very reflective. All right. 
Right. He's got a lot of uh, tone in his nose. Um, so I'm going to try to put some of that in there because I think it's quite weather-worn and burnt. There's also a little bit of uh, reflection coming up from his uh, moustache as well. There's quite a lot happening in here. The more you look, the more you discover. Um, so that's also true of, uh, you know, his uh, expression in many ways. Kind of reveals a lot about personality because you, you know, expressions um, or wrinkles and things, you know, forms in the face. The face changes due to time but it's not just time it's uh, activity over time so it's really based on thoughts and emotions and um, when you look at somebody and when you're drawing their face all of those thoughts and emotions come fighting back and you know even though you don't know them very well you kind of get an impression of the um, things that have gone on in their life So I'm detecting a little bit of um, struggle. Um, there's a little bit of conflict and struggle in his expression and in the wrinkles and forms around his face. So I don't know him enough to say that that was a thing, but I think there was, I can see that he, he, had, he, had, a tough, he had a tough life in many ways. You know, I think it's a very fulfilling life. Um, and, you know, we're all very respectful and lucky that uh, he has created such an incredible body of work and had a, such an uh, iconic and incredible effect on us. Um, you know, his imagination is really um, infectious. So, you know, there's a few people in my life that, that had a great sort of, you know, cumulative effect. I know I've spoken about that before. People like Frazetta, for example, but uh, definitely, you know, Ron Cobb. And, and that effect could be cumulatively, you know, like watching so many of his films. You get a, a, a really good taste of his aesthetic sensibilities and uh, how he saw the world, you know, how he saw these incredible um, ideas, his imagination is, is something that feeds us over time. getting a very good, a strong sense of his uh, personality here overall is incredibly, um, it's calm, but it's sort of calm after a storm. <laughs> it's like there's something that's, you know, I mean, un, undeniably a genius, but there is something there that indicates a real struggle to find or define the the truth in, in his work. So I, th I, I tend to think that there is a internal 
struggle that's uh, been going on all his life and um, you know I mean obviously it's, it, it has had a profound effect on his uh, on his work on his um, designs but it's there's a struggle going on in his head there's a struggle going on with you know form versus fu form over function or or um, you know the the imagination from childhood feeding the uh, furnace of ideas um, I will say this much you know like we all suffer at times I guess from uh, well you know kind of a writer's block I don't think he would have had a writer's block I think he would have you know really quickly um, his inquisitive mind and sense of um, uh, inspiration from activity I think is very uh, evident in this there's a lot of work there he's done an incredible amount of work we probably only see you know five percent ten percent maybe of what's been going on in his life creatively so you know which means that you know, he had quite a prolific career so that means that ten times more you're talking about I love this this is a beautiful see how the t-zone the, the concentration of effort into this little area has really paid off formally uh, given me a, a great sort of uh, tonal story about light and shade and texture there's a beautiful sense of uh, volume coming forward out of the gray paper this is why I love gray paper and this is sort of something that comes from antiquity really you know um, you know da Vinci used tone paper and and I know what you're thinking you're thinking oh well they didn't have bleach then to bleach the paper no actually they had bleach and they had white paper they, they definitely did it wasn't popular Everyone was sort of, I think, even back then, they were more, you know, they didn't want to pump chemicals into the canals of Venice because then it would um, destroy their fish. So environmentalism, I don't think, is a new thing. I think it's based on some common sense ideas. You know, there's a very crude saying but um, I won't mention it at the moment, but you can probably imagine what it would be. It's something to do with dogs and <laughs> things. Um, going to the bathroom anywhere where you're eating. And if dogs don't do it, then we shouldn't do it either. And I think that's been like a common, a common thread um, ever since we can remember. As I said, you know, um, common sense is not a new thing. This, what I'm using here is a paint marker, so that's just upping the, the ante and the uh, contrast stakes. So I'm just giving it a little bit of help. Ooh, some of the white areas. This is um, pretty much unaffected by the pencil. Um, it's very stark and strong which is helpful because you know we've got a lot of beard here to play with and we need to we need to refer to we need to paint that um, properly so this is helping with a lot establishing a lot of this uh, shine which is really nice okay actually not okay, let's do this. Soften this area. That's a bit better. All right, continue on. So he's got white hair, he's got uh, very, very little pigment in his hair left. 
Um, again, you know, I want to try to build up some of these textures and sun, sun damage and uh, age damage, perhaps. Some elements of his skin which are indicative of a, a life full of activity. You know, being on set. That's good. So far, so good. Let's see what damage we can do yet. Let's try and um. So this is a really nice pencil. This is a Prismacolor white pencil. I'm using a few different Prismacolors. They're quite soft. Um, you probably heard the sharpener. They don't react very well to hand pencil sharpeners. These things they just break. Also using a black polychroma, which is another very high quality uh, color pencil. Um, this is a little bit harder, so it can take a little bit more knocking around. And that's just giving me a little bit more dark in the uh, help with the uh, the contrasts. All right. Oh, that's. Uh, just want to. As we go, I'm trying to build up the areas, um, you know, tonally, formally, so that uh, I know how much um, contrast to build in there. So how much gloss to put in the lips, for example, because we've got to then work on this massive beard. And these are small little details which are important to structure in. So everything you put in there has a relative effect over its neighbor. Okay, um, right, so I think we've established that that can go a bit darker. Okay, good. I recently saw Alien again. Um, first time in many, many years, actually, I saw Alien 1. And I was really um, intensely involved in the film. So it's, it's a powerful, powerful film. You know, much scarier than any of its... Um, later versions. And of course, uh, you know, I saw that immediately when, I, when it came out in 1979, a likeness to a plot from another film, which I was a big fan of, which is It, The Terror from Beyond Space. So that was a, not pointing the finger, I'm just saying, you know. kind of sort of it's a better film obviously than it but uh, it wasn't uh, you know as, a, as 1950s films goes um, wasn't such a bad uh, it was quite enjoyable and very very scary so two scary films when I was a kid was that and The Crawling Hand which was another 1950s film that I used to see on late night um, Deadly Earnest TV. <laughs> Those that remember Deadly Earnest. It's like Elvira from the 60s. Elvira's uh, TV show, Horathon, but from an earlier age. So really, you know, there's a good thing and a bad thing about having messy hair. One is that um, you can't really make mistakes with the direction of the pencils because it's like, eh, it could have been there. 
the bad thing is it's a lot of work, it's, you know, because they're um, very tiny, very smaller bunches of hair, and that's kind of difficult to count. Can't count it. It's too many. So what I'm doing here is drawing the shadows in the hair itself and leaving the, the white part of the hair as, as paper and hopefully I can go over it with a white pencil. Hopefully I'm saying this because a good, you know, if you put white pencil over black pencil you get grey. We don't want that, we want white, so I want the white pencil to miss the black pencil and just hit the paper underneath, uh, next to it. But we may get unlucky. We'll see. Wow, it's such a lot of uh, wayward hairs here. Chaos. So the light's coming in from the from the upper left, so it's going to create a sense of shadows on, on the right hand side. A lot of these things are not visible, like his ear, for example, uh, in the photograph, but I am referring to it with the drawing. The drawings are not, um, they're not photos. This is some of the Tatooine igloo Luke's house from Star Wars, in the two sons. You have these sort of power masts, storm masts, or whatever it is. And then the sandy planet surface itself. Actually, I might um, knock that back just a bit and create a lighter effect on the top of the igloo. incredibly random almost these strokes but I'm sort of following a patterned uh, approach to creating tufts of hair but you know smaller than obviously a combed version this is an uncombed version of hair um, but I can't be too ignorant of the way hair moves and, and falls even dirty hair falls into some form of um, clear hair pattern, hair shapes. This looks very, at the end of the day, very sort of uh, in need of care. But you know, as I said from the, day, from the minute started this that uh, the two things that are going to be important here is his hair and his beard so I'm not lying am I it's uh, that's it okay so far so good it's see what more damage we can do here. Um, we'll put a shirt in and t-shirt. 
because that was in one of the other photos. And uh, put in the shadow from this head, enormous head over the small diminutive body, which I've chosen to do. Obviously, you know, caricatures have their own sense of rules. So it looks like he's on the set. Okay, here we go. Let's try to get some light back into this area of the hair. You can see I'm drawing around the black pencil because if you draw on the black pencil, you get grey. So we want to keep it as contrasty as we possibly can. Miss a lot of the black pencil and get the space just above it. You know, which also gives us a, a good lighting indication as well. And some of this, of course, you know, it's not possible to. There's a lot of black pencil there, but uh, we'll try our best. There you go. That works. That works. good. Looking promising. Let's get that down here, of course. There we go. So I miss the black pencil, hit it right next to it, and that'll give us enough contrast. So just the general shapes of the hairs. Don't colour them in because you lose definition. You need to leave some of that grey paper to create a sense of shading. Bring some more wayward hairs here. Very much a barbarian. It would have, um, I think he was in, uh, I think he played um, he was in Conan. I can't remember what role it was, but uh, it was kind of um, funny to see him in there. Third orc from the left. I don't know. So, so far uh, so good. We're getting a bit of definition into the beard. Of course, it's not just all white. You have to have definition, which means you leave areas of grey paper to establish that sense of shading and modelling. 
Okay, we're going to hit that with a white brush too, so we're going to hit like it'll really jump out from the grey paper in a sec. I just need to see what I mean by the white pencil over the black. Because it does go grey. But don't worry, we're going to hit help this out in a moment with a brush. Pencil's really good for fur and beards and hair and things like that because they you know, they approximate the linear quality of those um, elements, those textures. So Tatooine's two sons. Put them in there and the lighting on the igloo and desert. a little bit of sparkle to help with the contrast. So I'm going to try to establish some of these shine elements in the hair itself. And other parts. There's also another thing we can do with a pen we've got a white uh, point pen which is another opaque marker so that's pretty good too Good. So, you know, this toned paper effect actually works a treat for illustrating in general because you've sort of met halfway in the tone, building up the tonal relationships. So it works for, you know, concept art and storyboards and a lot of different things. It's quite a strong um, you know, sculptural effect to the drawing process. It's very, when you get enough contrast in there, of course, it's very sculptural indeed. I think it's quite satisfying in many ways. Okay, we get some smaller strokes that are very keenly white around the mustache. So the idea of this, uh, the white is actually, you know, light catching certain parts of the hair. So it's not sort of a colouring and processor overall. It's just certain areas. That's all you need just to refer to. You know, a little bit of light kick here and there. I 
actually a hard, strong highlight down the side of the face too. Yeah, that's it. All right, actually, might um, fix this up a bit. Good. Back to the brush pen. This is a little bit softer, of course, thick and thin. It's going to help blend in the pencil strokes. I just want to catch some, some of the, you know, sort of indicate some light hitting the top parts of the hair and giving us a little bit of a, a kick. So I'm going to, I think, colour the sky, um, the space around Ron, with a black pen, black marker. I think that might give us a bit more contrast to play with. Let's try to do that now. Um, actually, we'll use a, a brush pen for that, because there's a lot of smaller details. Um, actually, no, I won't use that. Let's use a pen. Uh, like that one, this one is here. So this is a opaque pen and that will give us the ability to draw close to the highlights, establishing more of a contrast and almost a cutout effect of these uh, shapes. You know, which makes the contours look more interesting. So even this hair, I'm going to sort of outline a little bit. So yeah, like that. So the idea of this is to draw a maximum amount of contrast out as much as we can, just to help with the drama of the illustration. I don't want to cut too close to these little lines in there.
helps the beard stand out from the rest a little bit more. things is of course it dries really flat and nice. I like this uh, drawing. I was a little bit unsure because I think because the, the, all of the elements are quite even, you know, the shape uh, is all quite even. I was a little bit worried that it may not be as interesting um, but I think it's uh, Quite nice. A little bit more contrast. A little bit over here, blending in that sharp strokes of the pin. All right, that's good. Uh, oh, let's fix the frame. I've just uh, noticed that. Oh, am I moving this out of the alignment? It's not good. So. Okay, close to the finish, here we go, let's fix up the ribbon, name tag, good. Right, uh, what else, let me continue the uh, the desert uh, lighting a little bit. Well, that's quite good. I think I'm happy with that. All right, let's try to get this uh, named R O N C O B B Ron Cobb. So there he is. So far, I think we've accomplished quite a bit within the uh, the process. I'm just cleaning up some of this uh, wayward lines here and there. Now that's going to dry quite flat, you know. It's going to be a very nice um, flat tone there. So let's have a look at him. This is wrong. And you can see it's such a lot of it. There's a lot of emotion in Ron, too. There's a lot of emotion. You can tell that from his eyes, his expression. You know, he's a very warm character, sadly missed. Um, you know, uh, condolences, of course, to his, his uh, family and loved ones. He was a great influence uh, in my life and my career, and, and a lot of artists in. Uh, in the world today owe a lot to his uh, his imagination and his courage so you know he's a great guy and um, we're richer for his his helping his being in this uh, this wonderful business of the imagination and drawing this is my drawing of Ronkov and a uh, hero of mine, definitely, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed um, thinking and talking about him and how much he's helped me over the years. Um, anyway, this is Franz Cantor saying to you, I will catch you on 